after this uh, statement I will just stop talking and then whoever wants to take the floor and share their ideas of what this organizational reform would be and what is needed just go ahead so I guess I'll take the floor then um, I met with James Phillips uh, Ben McLeish and Tom Williams yesterday to discuss a bunch of this stuff and I think James has just signed in here I think he was going to take the floor and uh, read over a bunch of our recommendations okay can everybody hear me Yes, sir. Yep. yep. Absolutely. Okay. Um, apologies in advance. This may take just a little bit longer than, than a minute because it, it did take a little bit of time to word, but it's quite a concise suggested plan in, of action and resolution over this issue. So uh, is that okay if I just take a little bit longer? Well, sure. I mean, uh, is it an idea? I don't know if that's possible with the way you've wrote it up that you uh, dissect it into segments. Um, probably not. And also... Um, I'm sorry, I've just got to this meeting a little bit late, so I'd, I'm also, I'll read it out. Shall I share the link for this first? Sure, go ahead, and just for your information, you're the first speaker, so. Okay, look, I'm very sorry, I can't find uh, the link at the moment. I think Matt may have it, um, uh, that I sent him in an email, so if he could post it whilst I'm talking, that would be appreciated, but I'll just get started. Um, okay, so, okay, so, uh, sorry, uh, can everybody still hear me? Sorry to say that again. Yeah. Fine. Okay. So, suggested plan for reconciliation and positive development at TZM. Recent events involving concern, uh, concerns expressed in an open letter by ex-global lecture team member Matt Berkowitz and signed by many TZM members have brought up several issues which need to be addressed. But first of all, a brief outline of the intent of this document. Involve, all parties involved in this issue have their individual perspectives on what has transpired in light of these events. But in the interest of the promotion of the train of thought and through extensive discusses, discussions with all concerned, the only point of interest at this juncture should be how to go about addressing these concerns on all sides in a way that has a positive net outcome for TZM. In dealing with this issue, it seems pertinent to first lay out the facts. One, recent events were set in motion by Matt's video, How to Know What's True, Assessing Scientific Research. Concerns over the content of this video were raised and dealt with in a meeting with the GCA whereupon it was decided that the video should remain on the main channel but with a disclaimer added to the front to address these concerns indicating that the views expressed were not necessarily those of the Zeitgeist movement. This video has since been removed from the official YouTube page due to the recent fallout at the time of writing 10-11-14. Sorry about that. The op uh, two, the open letter published by Matt, whilst having within it concerns of many TZM members to be addressed forthwith, has also caused a lot of distress, division and overall communication breakdown thus far amongst many members of the movement, resulting in the aforementioned removal of the video. Three, the letter is available from the following um, link, which I can put in the description in a minute. The recommendations at the bottom of this letter will be addressed along with points one and two in the corresponding points below. So given that these are the facts, here are the following recommendations for each point mentioned above. One, the issues expressed over the content of the video were dealt with by the GCA at the time of publication and the decision was made that the disclaimer was enough to deal with these concerns and that the video should remain on the official channel. This decision must therefore be respected and reinstated immediately and without delay. This point also relates to the structural recommendations which will be expanded upon in point three. Two, there needs to be an adequate structure to deal with any concerns of TZM members so that no one feels the need to go public regarding these or any other internal issues. In attempting to achieve this, members should try their utmost to communicate with each other as respectfully and peacefully as possible at all times either seeking a solution to their concerns or presenting one as and when they arise. This is more a recommendation than a rule, of course, but it is obviously beneficial in terms of engaging in constructive and peaceful dialogue. The structural recommendations at this point would be that any issues or recommendations regarding structure or internal issues are brought up with the GCA and dealt with and decided by the majority of members present. An amicable agreement should always be the goal in these proceedings. However, if one cannot be found, then the time for, uh, for the time being at least, the decision of the GCA is final. The issue of any one person retaining control over TZM official media and admin channels needs correction. 
One possible way in resolving this could be in having several steps involved in the posting or deletion of critical TZM med media, i.e. if someone uploads a video, it has to be approved or authenticated by someone else who is part of the relevant team, perhaps by needing to enter a code to confirm this decision. This may help prevent any future abuse of the system. This is possible on YouTube as displayed from the following link. If, um, if the GCA decides on a course of action regarding any material presented and a member then decides to go public with these internal matters, then they should consider their position in the global team and all access to global channels of communication revoked. This action is not to be dictatorial, but rather a common sense outcome of any attempt to publicly discredit TZM rather than resolve such issues internally. Three, in addressing point one of the letter, which states, one, there needs to be more quality control both within the administrative body of TZM, for example, the global chapters administration and within public speakers for TZM. This may be accomplished by enforcing some sort of scientific competency critical thinking test as a prerequisite for participation. <clears throat> this could be viable if someone pre presents such a program through the GCA at a future date. At, at the very least, a well-rounded appreciation and understanding of TZM materials seems like a common sense starting point for such an idea and worthy of further discussion. It should be stated at this point that general TZM advocacy is of course completely open to everyone from all backgrounds. However, when it comes to the internal structure and decision making of the core team regarding official movement materials, then an adequate display of, a scientific, of scientific literacy and communica communicative competency is paramount, as it is in any functional organisation or group. Useful suggestions have been made recently regarding the possibility of establishing a team of trained professionally accredited individuals in their various fields of expertise pertaining to TZM advocacy in order to flag up any concerns with movement materials ensuring that they are always as scientifically accurate and robust as possible. At this stage, however, and to secure an amicable agreement and move on positively, the emphasis over what is presented via official TZM portals must remain under the jurisdiction of the GCA. The second point of the letter states as follows. Two, when supporting the natural law resource-based economy, rely on the most robust, high-quality, peer-reviewed evidence possible, embracing scientific consensus wherever it exists, and not avoiding issues that are socially contentious but not scientifically contentious, especially when they relate to the sustainability goals of an NLRBE. Response. Much of this concern seems to do more with the personal advocations of particular members rather than over any particular existing official TZM material. This may be open to a certain level of ambiguity, but the advocations and communications of prominent members of TZM do, by extension, reflect back to the movement whether we like it or not. If a member feels that the actions of another core team member may be highly detrimental to TZM advocacy overall, then these issues could perhaps be raised as diplomatically as possible, either privately with said individual first perhaps, and if absolutely necessary with the GCA. Only as a last resort and when no amicable agreement can be reached, the GCA retains the right to revoke the coordinational responsibilities and access of any member of TZM. If we can reach some form of agreement on these initial recommendations, then Matt has stated that the open letter will be removed. Then we can hopefully grow stronger from this as a movement and move forward in a positive and unified direction. To conclude, we all care passionately about changing this world for the better, and regardless of what our personal differences and opinion may be, uh, this is why we are all here. There will be many more suggestions to make TZM stronger and improve its overall image over time. And with all these changes and differences, it is important to try to remember that we are all on the same side here and all want the same thing. A better life for all on this planet. Thanks very much. Still, still digesting all the info. I'm sorry for not a direct response on my part, but perhaps somebody else is good to go. Uh, um, I'm sorry, go, go ahead, Ray. I just wanted to point out that on sorry uh, on point two uh, in regards or better yet on the point where he guarded the um, requirements for GC activity, we currently have requirements as far as movement understanding goes. We have quite a few questions which every single member who joins has to fulfill um, to an acceptable level. Um, 
in the view of other mem team members. However, it is indeed the case that there's no uh, questions pertaining to scientific literacy specifically on, on the questions, so that's all. I think uh, Carl, Gra Carl Gabriel Yoris made a very good suggestion. Perhaps we could go over them one by one, over the suggestions. Or does anybody have a better idea? I think Ray wanted to know. I, yeah, I just go ahead, wanted, Ray. Yeah, I, I just wanted to ask, in this, um, in, in this Google Doc, a suggested plan of action, um, some points are, are emboldened and uh, others are italicized. I'm just wondering if this denotes um, a question that was brought up and then the following answer from perhaps the group that created the document, uh, trying to follow who is saying what or who is suggesting what in this uh, suggested plan of action Google Doc was a little bit difficult. Um, I, I basically wrote up the initial draft and then shared it amongst um, Ben McLeish, Matt Berkowitz, Tom Williams, um, Philip Blair and myself just to sort of try to bring something substantial to the movement. The, the italics refer to the um, recommendations from Matt's open letter and the bold in the document refers to the two major points that um, that need to be addressed here is that if we can get some agreement on on the video going back up, for example, and um, some of the moving forward on some of the other suggestions that were made, then uh, then it seems that we can start to move on really progressively. So those bold points seemed seemed um, uh, necessary. Okay, thank you very much. Great. So let's uh, start with the the beginning of the suggestions then, or the recommendations. Uh, that's the right word. First of all, is everybody um, up to date on the facts that transpired? Do they seem accurate? No. Well, not since no the king. Uh, I wanted to say it's, yeah, I think this is well written, gets the point clearly across. Um, so that's my view. So I suppose the, f the first point here is regarding the video, which is, is currently down, but at the time was, um, uh, was approved by the GCA for remaining on as long as there was a disclaimer added. Um, can, does that decision, that decision surely still stands? I wasn't in the meeting and I haven't listened to it. Um, well, I can give you a little background. Uh, what happened before was that uh, a member from ZM Canada filed a complaint with the GCA a few weeks uh, before there were any other problems complaining about the video uh, and that they didn't like it and a number of people. That was the first I've heard about that video. Um, and after, I haven't kept track in the following weeks. Somehow at some point it exploded because there was some debating in YouTube comments, I believe. Then other members of the GCA brought this to our attention. We invited Matt. Uh, then discussed the severity and uh, at that point we did feel it was enough uh, just to add a disclaimer that it's not necessarily TZM point of view so I can attest that that's an accurate description. Was there a sense that the people who were making these complaints um, actually had uh, a significant scientific basis for those complaints? Because we get uh, we get negative comments on everything. Yes, these were complaints uh, done either directly to the GCA by coming on to the team speak and actually wanting to talk about it, uh, and a uh, number of emails sent to uh, media at the Zeitgeist and Peter at the Zeitgeist Movement dot com, I believe. Mm, I, but I'd have to ask Victor and. Um, uh, Oh, Victor was active at that time. Let's see what, just a moment. Well, maybe, yeah, Giovanna, maybe Victor and Giovanna. Do you know if any complaints came in through the chapters at the ZeitgeistMovement.com email? I don't remember the email, but I do know the uh, French, some people from the French chapters, they, they were complaining. That's what I know. Yeah, they contacted me directly. The French and uh, Canadian. Uh, France and Canada. Okay, well, um, the, those were complaints by actual chapters, so it weren't just people trolling the YouTube oh. channel. No, I didn't. I didn't take any. Um, um, 
I didn't record any uh, of the um, comments down there. Um, by the way, also um, Steve was uh, um, among the people, or also me was among the people um, who um, was who were who was um, uh, sorry who were uh, bringing up these issues. Let me let me just clarify that uh, I'm not gonna go over one minute. I'm just gonna. Uh, I just brought it up because it's like we are bringing out unnecessary questions towards the movement. It's good to question and have a scientific base. Uh, the administration and the people who are, uh, you know, strongly within the core should be should have a scientific knowledge. But neither of us have great scientific knowledge and uh, therefore since we are not even in a NLRBE you cannot really say all the science that's being given to us is absolutely true which over and over, over again throughout history has proven to be wrong so therefore just leave it like this why bring in questions uh, we should be active in just promoting TZM more than that that was my concern that's it so I, I don't think we're actually talking about the crux of the issue here because it seems like uh, there was already a consensus to leave it up. And I think we, we just should have moved on, on, on from that um, already. I think the issue now is uh, why was it removed uh, despite this consensus having, having formed by the GCA? Um, and then of course that leads to the, the problem of single person control of TZM uh, medium channels. Yeah, indeed. I, I do think it's the most productive to just uh, talk about the suggestions in the in the letter. So for for our part, that was part of the background. Um, I'll admit I haven't been interacting much with the issue as far as uh, only as far as the video goes. I mean, uh, Matt can also uh, confirm that I've contacted him to talk about it, but then I got well loaded up with work, and I just recently only contacted him again since the issue exploded but it wasn't uh, something high in my my uh, schedule anyhow uh, that's that for that point I guess <laughs> I, I think in, in part the issue was taken down because of um, the preceding communication uh, breakdown over this matter and, and um, uh, I, I suppose emotions run high, but that, that doesn't stop the fact that the, the GCA basically said the video stays up with the disclaimer. The, the, the fact and the suggestion from the fact, from the premise rather, seem to be logically coherent and sound. Uh, if the GCA is going to have any authority over anything or be worthwhile doing, any, uh, doing anything at all, then it seems that if the video is vindicated, then it, it needs to... Um, needs to go back up. That being said, the, there's other following points in terms of communication that drove it that way that also need to be addressed, but um, uh, yeah. Uh, okay, well, that's an interesting part of the issue that you raised because um, for one, the reason we've invited Matt uh, to talk about it is not because of the content necessarily, uh, it was more because of the, the chapters that that had issues with it, and uh, and, and again, like we're not going to discuss the the content per se, but there were people that had issues with it, and there were people that did not have issues with it. That's basically the case, and it still is the case as it is today. Uh, we then, in an exception, we decided to talk about it, and uh, then came to the conclusion that it would be best to put a disclaimer on it. Uh, but as for future uh, decisions or decision making regarding such issues. This is not exactly what the GCA is for. Uh, our function lies with the chapters and not necessarily content. I myself, I'm not the most well-spoken person in the movement and I've read parts of TCM defined. I understand the train of thought enough to be working on a day-to-day -day basis for the movement, but I don't uh, I can't explain everything to everybody. I'm not the, the right person to judge content, if you will, and neither are the rest of the people in my team. They're also uh, 
good good to work in on a day-to-day -day basis understand the train of thought but uh, as far as lecture team understanding uh, none of us go that far unless I'm speaking for somebody in my team that deems it uh, different yeah that's why then, one of our sorry go ahead James I think that point is addressed in some of the structural recommendations a, a little later on but, but uh, go on Matt yeah, that's what I was going to say. That's why one of our recommendations was to implement some sort of, uh, I don't know, TZM research team, uh, people who, you know, are trained in 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 a, in a form of science, uh, understand how the process works, and would be able to evaluate, uh, you know, the scientific competence of the materials that get put put out and under the under the umbrella of T, of TZM. But but ultimately, I, I do think that um, some sort of authority needs to rest somewhere. And it seems like the 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 GCA is is a place that that, that should be the hub for this this type of thing. Um, no. Well, technically, GCA would have to be rewarded for that. But I agree, but that's my personal view here. So go ahead, Gilbert. Well, I mean, um, I'm talking now. Uh, of course, the GCA in the current form. Um, I guess, like you said, perhaps that would be a topic for later, but then there would definitely need to be a restructuring of what DCA means or day-to-day -day administration would be for the movement. Uh, but but at, the, at the moment, while I haven't heard Miguel further and, and others, uh, what, why that could be part of what is now the GCA, but in a different form, I do... Um, um, do you want to go into Andy's point? Uh, does there do there need to be more people in the media team curating? Uh, perhaps uh, for for what I know and what I've always thought to be uh, a good way to con well at least have quality control over the content is to leave the production of it with the lecture team being uh, uh, Peter Ben and and Matt. Uh, who have wrote, wrote uh, TCM defined uh, together uh, with input from others, um, and I I don't know I don't know who should uh, or how that would, how that should be uh, curated in the future or or quality control I guess that's something that we can discuss today uh, and at least collect the ideas. Well, yeah, I don't just... think that um, I don't think that. Uh... The GCA is any place for that at all. I think that they should focus on chapters, and I think that there needs to be a zeitgeist administration team, which would be totally separate from that. Exactly. That's the point I wanted to make here. It seems to be more and more obvious that a central administration for the movement needs to be developed. Because um, right now, there's GCA, there's the linguistics team, there's other teams, but there's no real entity that unifies everything together. Yes, that's something we've spoken about in the last GCA meeting as well. Uh, since the, that idea has been floating around for a long, long time, uh, it has never been executed. Uh, why? Because, well, the people that were working on the movement day by day, well, day to day, uh, myself, Miguel included, uh, and a lot of others uh, that, that were here all the time, contributing time, uh, we, at some point, we, we've had burnout moments and at that point, nobody else had the will or they had the idea perhaps to step up. So those processes have been stalled for too long. Uh, but that idea is, has always been there to have an uh, administration of sorts. And I also have to say that uh, this is the most tranquil time, if you will, in terms of movement and activity in, in a sense that we don't have people shouting and, 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 and making noise about everything. So really, I, I don't think that earlier there was an opportunity for it because when we spoke about having a core team or, well, that idea wasn't even uh, brought forward by us at the, in the first place. There was some rumor floating around and then we thought, well, hey, uh, it wouldn't even be bad to have a core team. There was a lot of opposition to having a core team within the movement. So that's just some background. And uh, why was there opposition, if I may know? Because uh, it was hard to understand for certain people that we would have to make decisions in small teams at some points uh, to uh, get things done. It comes down to trust, I think. 
Well, exactly, and and also considering that people wouldn't be wanting to work in something like the GCA if they didn't have the heart for it, and uh, work on a day by day basis, you know, uh, not here uh, to control people. <laughs> yep. So yeah, I mean, uh, to further the conversation, yes, a central team, uh, and we've we've originally always seen it as a as a combination of of part of the lecture team communications team, media team, even maybe a representative of the GCA, no, but not definitely not all members, just a small part of every bit of the movement. That was the traditional idea uh, which would make up such a core team. Of course, we don't have many of those teams now anymore. It's basically just the GCA and, uh, and the lecture team partially. So, yeah, I mean, uh, we, would, we would need to reevaluate what parts we would want in the movement. Do we need a media team? Do we need a, a, a development team like we wanted in the, in the past? Is it, is it necessary to have uh, dedicated programmers or not? Can we just hire somebody like Peter is doing now for certain projects which will get done fast because we've had so many issues? Oh shit, I'm breaking my own rules with uh, one minute. I'm sorry. Uh, so sure, okay. continue. Yeah, and uh, basically the existence of such team would continue the, uh, I mean, would enable the mechanism for self continual self-improvement throughout the whole structure. I mean, an uh, uh, administrative body that is solely responsible for the good operation of the whole movement is is something essential, really. Um, not only the chapters, as the GCA tries to, to take care of, um, but yeah, the thing is, with implementing such reform, uh, talking about in specific terms of what's going to be required, uh, there might be a possibility that we have to shift some resources, uh, human resources, the movement around, so we can fit such an administrative body. But those are details that should be addressed later. Could you uh, could you uh, further elaborate on what you typed in chat, uh, James, just for the people that aren't uh, watching the chat and will listen to the recording later? Well, I, uh, I wrote that these teams and admin are contingent upon voluntary participation, we need, um, meaning that, you know, we are a volunteer organization, so whatever the structure should be, it should be strategic, it should be efficient, and it should be s small and effective and manageable um, it, uh, in, the, in the spirit of the scientific method, I suppose. So, you know, we need to cut down on bureaucracy. But we also need to pay attention to the things brought up in this document. If we have material going up online and then you know get it's it's validated and then it's it's pulled down and, and put back up, and also then people with internal issues choose to go public with it because at least they feel that there's no other way of dealing with it. Um, you know, then, then that type of communication, which which clearly does cause the problems outlined in the document, then these are issues with our structure and they need to be addressed one one way or the other. I don't think any of us can get away from that. Um, so uh, I think that point still stands, but we just need to know the sort of um, best way in doing this. That, that would sum up that point. Well, I, I mean, um, are, are you talking now about the example of the YouTube video uh, specifically? Uh, uh, yes, as well as the letter, I, I suppose, um, you know, that has caused stress, uh, much like the sorts of things brought up in, uh, in the document here. Exactly, okay. Well, just a, a short note, like, uh, if we do have something in place that would uh, quality control the media going up or down, I mean, in this case, uh, the, the quality control, uh, it, the, 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 well, the small form of quality control by the body that isn't really really for it was done after the video was uh, put up. Um, if in the future we would do something like that and, and make sure that any decision that that part of the, the organization takes on uh, video uh, is, is right or wrong for the movement then it would need to be uh, two-sided in the sense that before it goes up it would need to be checked whether it's part of the core uh, core content of the movement if you will before it even goes up and then in the future and this is not meant in any way bad to you Matt but just because we're talking about this specific part is that no member of the lecture team if you will will be uploading videos without 
uh, also uh, checking with the core team, core or the sorry, with the quality control team or whatever we're going to call it, uh, to see whether it doesn't derive too much from the core content. Yeah, so I, that's basically what I had in mind even before I I recorded the uh, the video and, and had it uploaded. Um, if you if you check out my transcript, I have I had I had it basically, you know, my own version of peer reviewed by like five or so PhD people in, in science. So like that sort of system for such videos, I think would be helpful. Okay, there seems to be. Uh, I think we're pretty much all in agreement in regards to this. So the common, the, the real talking point here, um, which we have to pursue, is the creation of a, a new administrative body that is basically in charge of the whole function of everything, including the lecture team and its quality control, internal quality control mechanisms. Am I being uh, missing anything here? here? Could I uh, just put something out there? Why can't the lecture team control their own videos? And let's say somebody is putting up a video, send it to the rest of the lecture team, and if everybody agrees, you put it up. That's it. And you don't need that extra body that says, yes, you can do that, yes, you cannot do that. Well, it seems yeah, that, that, that would be... That it seems Go ahead. that it didn't, uh, didn't happen. Um, meaning, for as as for what I know, uh, Matt put the uh, um, article in the blog uh, without any blog team control. Um, so, um, you know, still um, maybe someone else is good to. Um, maybe the uh, control must be um, outside and not and not within. So having having the content checked by the lecture team would work if if there was indeed equal power within the lecture team members, um, you know, to control such content. But that's not the case right now, and that's one of the main gripes, of course, um, that I've had is, is that one person can just dictatorially remove. Like I, I, I don't really want to be talking about this stuff like this, but I have to call it like I see it. it one person should not have the ultimate control to remove content like this. And so you, we've got to deal with that. In that process, in my view, through creation of an administrative body to have the ultimate saying in these situations. Well, we can so no on, individual. We, we can work and think about how to uh, manage this. Yes, uh, of course. I mean, nobody. I don't think anybody here in the channel will disagree with that, with that point that uh, that it shouldn't be overpowering. I I do think, and that's a different point of discussion, is is whether how how much content creation is actually needed, and how much content do we already have that we need as the movement. I mean, with TZM defined, we're pretty much good to go. Uh, Aside from the fact that certain uh, things, uh, in, in order also not to contradict ourselves, of course, always need to be reevaluated to some point when something obvious, obviously better comes in place. But I mean, th we should also put a limit into how many material is movement material and what is not. I mean, if if we don't, I I only foresee other problems because people have many interests, of course. Uh, definitely, people that become very enthusiastic for the movement in the beginning, they 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 read the core material, or they I don't maybe they've even seen the first movie. Their whole mind is uh, blown open, if you will, and people start to think about a lot of different things. And I've seen it with a lot of people that were here five years ago. Um, they understand the general message but they found something else that they found more uh, interesting doing which could be related to the train of thought in a NLRBE but it's not directly as associated with the core content so we have to be wary of that in order to prevent people that turn to other fields of interest uh, that they don't get it mixed up with core material and not try to expand the core material uh, in order to, uh, yeah, have have more room for their new found hobby or beliefs to be, uh, yeah, in included. I don't know. This maybe sounds more aggressive than I mean it, but. <laughs>
Gilbert, I'm a little bit unclear as to what you're advocating. Are you suggesting that there shouldn't be too much saturation of, of content that gets posted under the TZM umbrella? Uh, could you clarify saturation in this in this uh, situation? My my that English word doesn't translate well for me in this. Uh... <laughs> Sorry, um, you're just you're just concerned with uh, with too much content that gets created under the TZM umbrella? Yes, and that concern is not just ab about the content being created, but also being able to manage a lot of viewpoints or points of view from people, whether they're, they're scientifically... Uh, um, it's late here, so that's why I'm losing English words. Wh whether, whether there's some scientific basis to it or not, uh, what, what I'm trying to say is that, from my point of view, but I'll stop then and let others talk after this, is that we we unite here in order to promote the core content which make up uh, the train of thought beha behind an NLRBE, and that there should be some borders to uh, what is co core content and what is not. And right now, our, our most... Um, well, in order to make sure we, we don't derive from it too far, I would say TZM defined is a pretty good standard and, and we stick as close as possible to the material therein. However, not having read all of the book yet, I cannot state with, uh, I cannot, I cannot state that, that that should be the ultimate guideline, for example, because I still need to complete the whole material. I think um, we might already be putting the cart ahead of the horse here. There should be a discussion in follow-up uh, of the point that was the purpose of this meeting. The purpose of this meeting is basically to agree on a first step towards a solution. And to that effect, I can, at least on my point of view as it stands now, we kind of have agreed that an administrative body is required to, to get some progress on these situations to avoid from them happening again. Um, in that sense, Gilbert, I mean, we have to make a call here I mean, or exactly how we should proceed with this because at the end of the day, we have to talk with Peter and approach him about this situation. I'd like to add that we should talk not only with people here now, but to invite all the coordinators around the world because um, um, there hasn't been a public advertise this meeting so a lot of people don't know about this meeting a lot no, of that's... national coordinate sorry uh, a lot of national coordinators didn't know about this no exactly because i had no idea how the meeting would go and and there were signatories to the letter i thought it would be the most appropriate thing to invite the signatories to the letter to discuss and see whether we could find some uh yes or discuss some of the proposals so but yes miguel uh, i agree we're deriving too much and I think everybody indeed uh, wants to have that uh, administrative body in place, at least as people who spoke up uh, during the meeting so far. Um, sure, I mean, Peter has stated quite a, quite often that he wants to, um, he doesn't necessarily want to be involved in that part of the process. He wants to be involved in content creation. The uh, reason he stepped in is because he's being bothered with it. So we need to remove that element that people do not run to Peter if uh, something like this happens, but rather to the correct body within the organization. But having said that, I can imagine why it happened the way it happened, because we don't have that body in place. So there you go. Yep. And once with... Go ahead. I'm sorry, Dar. I'm just going to say once such a body is in place, there's going to need to be a concerted effort to get the... Uh, you know, connections to get the, um, you know, the email for that group out to everybody. Um, do we actually have that ability to reach everybody? To, yes. To make that clear. Sure. I mean, every, everything can be done. We can have access to everything and anything. Uh, perhaps the global side will be uh, a little more difficult, but um, I can talk with Peter about that and just post all the information that we need so there will not be any issues but 
uh, the formation is, is rather something that would be very important to talk about in maybe a follow-up meeting. Uh, could I add one point? We, um, uh, if you know most of the guys in the GCA here, it's so tough to get people to volunteer to the GCA. And now creating another body, I have a lot of concern that we will have problems. So why doesn't the lecture team handle the videos and the content and they are the most, you know, qualified to do so rather than the GCA or any other team. Uh, they can do it themselves and post it. Sorry, Steve, let me clarify um, something here. What, what happens, what is the system mechanism in place in TCM if the lecture team is enabled to fulfill their duty? I mean, some somebody has to be ultimately responsible for that. And we can always say, oh, we can put a body in charge of that one and that one inside of that one. But we don't, we have no failsafe. If a major team fails at this point, there is no failsafe. And that, that is something that needs to be addressed. Uh, okay, sorry. I'm, I'm telling you this because uh, I'm from a business side. And the more you put administrative things in a certain organization, less effective it's going to be. Just a point. Well, I think as, well, my... as, as said before, we are just picking up um, ideas and uh, we don't take any decision now, but we, would, we, will talk, we will talk about these ideas who are coming up today uh, from this group uh, who uh, wrote the the that that letter, and, uh, and then we will discuss, we will discuss everything um, with the with the normal GCA team, and uh, and then we I I hope we are we are going to um, get all the uh, consensus or from all over the world uh, national coordinators. Wait, what? I I didn't hear your. Well, uh, we we can discuss this within uh, the GCA and or uh, um, or also the other teams, of course, and then see what we can do, and we we will decide then uh, what we can do. Um, of course, uh, today we are just picking up ideas. Yeah, I mean, the, that's the whole point here. I mean, whenever we take it to a further stage, of course, we'll address it in a chapter meeting. I'm just looking at the, at the letter if we've missed any specific point. Could you help us with that, James? So there's the idea of dual um, authentication. So, for instance, if there could be a dual authentication process, this might cut down on a lot of what we're talking about. I'm a big fan of, and I'm sure we all are here, of um, technological applications to the, this sort of things that we don't have big structures but we have maybe that lecture team for example could have a couple of other people I mean in a sense we already do this I do send my radio shows to Ben for example and I, I think maybe we've got a bit lazy of late he doesn't check my material before it goes out um, for, no, you know um, my uh, yeah, my, my girlfriend checks my materials before they go out, and that's kind of a... Uh, but, but, you know, at least if they go through another set of trusted eyes, then, then that's not a bad thing. Um, I, think, I think if things are brought up, maybe, by a power... If we have some people involved in this who are educated um, uh, in their respective fields, as was brought up in the, the document, the things, I hate to say it at the moment, but after the fact, you know, where things are flagged up, and then we can start to deal with issues then for now that might be a reasonable proposition perhaps but I think I would like to add something that a, a lot of this is is not regarding actual our, our official materials is it, it, but rather it, it comes into conflict when when a, a member is putting out certain material that's um, scientifically bogus and they have quite a uh, a high um, ranking or not ranking or, or quite notability, shall we say, as a spokesman for this movement, and it reflects back, which was expressed in the document. Could you expand upon that point, Matt? Well, it's, I guess, all point of the same issue here. Um, so it's, it boils down to one person having access uh, to uh, 
basically last call for all the different uh, media channels that TZM has, you know, the YouTube channel, the blog, and, and whatnot. Um, the fact that one person can just remove someone's privileges or delete a video obviously needs correction. Um, now, it, this is sort of a problem that's gone back to the origins of TZM, in my view. Its, its origins uh, are essentially stem from a film that's not based in good quality science, and that unfortunately has a, you know, a PR problem that resonates outward. Um, so, since since Peters uh, looked up at, uh, looked up to as a you know sort of a benchmark for content, um, when he posts something that's that's rather dubious, it reflects badly on on TZM because there's a very you know gray distinction between uh, the movement and him. So again, if there's more effort to um, uh, just correct this problem of you know one person. Uh, dictatorship over the media channels, then these issues wouldn't be as prominent, I think. Well, yeah, again, I mean, it, the problem is just that there's no body in place, in which case, I, I don't think that Peter actually, I, I mean, no, let's not get get into it. The fact is, the reason it was removed for, for as far as I understand was because of all the fuss about it and not because of the content, uh, essentially. So, I mean, it, Peter has to deal with the fuss around it, then he's gonna remove it because he wants to continue creating content. Just, just I'm just speaking generally now. Not sure if that actually happened that particular way, but um, so that body needs to be there in order to um, make sure that when fuss happens, it can deal with it, and also before it gets even uploaded, this uh, just reviews it. Bef- in terms of is this close enough to the core material what what does it do for the movement directly to upload this information and then i i'd assume that there wouldn't be any or at least very le- well much less uh, fuss i'm curious i'm i'm aware that there's a a youtube channel called something like tzm lectures um why aren't we just uploading the lecture circuits uh, work there and having them manage that channel. So yeah, there's TZM official channel, which is just the general YouTube channel for the global movement that where, uh, you know, official content gets uploaded. So, well, when, when the adequate body is in place, uh, we can take, uh, we can take the management of those channels. That's no problem. I mean, yeah, I mean, this would probably, well, the name is still left for grabs, but it will have to be something of, of the sorts of uh, um, Zeitgeist Global Administration, like TZM, like Zeitgeist Global Administration. It will be an all-encompassing thing, responsible for everything that is at a top level, in a sense that responsible for the main YouTube channel, responsible for the website, the main one, uh, responsible for keeping the mail list, the mailing list uh, up and running correctly. Um, and then immediately th- this would obviously branch out in much uh, like a lot of other teams with um, you know, relatively small cores of people which branch into other small cores. And um, But at a, at a larger level, this would obviously branch out into the chapters, organism, chapter structure. So the GCA would be a child node of this new administrative body. The lecture team would be a sibling of the GCA in this sense. Um, and it will be like this main body will be responsible for everything basically. If the GCA has issues, then this main body will probably interfere with it. If the lecture team has issues, this main body will interfere with it. If some kind of structural reform is is needed, this body will be the one responsible for getting agreement on it and setting a plan in motion and carrying out the plan. Um, I think this is the thing we all want here. Uh, I might be understand, like misunderstanding something. If not, speak up. Well, that leads to another concern. Um, my own perception of what what goes on, at least within the the chapters, for instance, is that, and I just use this as a, an answer to Soto, um, that you, know, you guys have put out several requests for people to come and join the team to help out with a lot of the the tasks that need to be done. Um, my perception is that you really didn't receive a whole lot of hands going up. Um, so the, the idea of creating yet another body, uh, how many people are actually able to you know, help in these areas? 
uh, extending beyond the you know the the management of their chapters uh, or, or other project groups that they're doing. Do we have enough people for this? Active people. Uh, I want to make that distinction. We have plenty of people. We don't have plenty of active people. That goes back to <laughs> my original point, which is we on the formation on this team we have to make like a call has to be made as in we have to prioritize human resources and as i see it right now i don't think we'll have enough people or enough trusted active people that can be on such team um, at least to a satisfy satisfactory um, level so my what i expect personally is that we have to approach people in current other uh, movement positions and tell them to, you know, <laughs> try to hand over your, your current thing to someone and please like join this team and, and be part of it. it. It has to be kind of the approach that we have to take uh, in the worst case scenario. I mean, a, like a body with no central nervous system, it will not go very far. And it's preferable to lose a hand to, to, to have a brain. I, I, that's my point of view. But yeah, I think <laughs> the ideal scenario would, would be draw up a list of people who volunteered, of course, all of them have to be volunteered. And if there's lack of volunteers, well, <laughs> a list of people who have to be approached in a more serious manner has to be done as well. But at the end of the day, this, this is, everything is volunteer. So we're always limited by the possibility of not having enough. Yeah, and for, for all the folks in the text chat who are talking about this, you know, this idea of like voting people in or term limits and that kind of stuff, um, I can give you some of my own uh, perspective on this uh, or uh, experience, if you will. I've been running LTI for over four years now, and it is very hard to get anything done with um, limited uh, human resources. And by human resources, I'm not talking about people who want to help. I'm talking about people who actually have the, um, well, let's call it passion. To, to be there every single day doing grunt work because that's basically what happens at the administrative level. It's grunt work. It's not pretty. Uh, it's usually putting out fires or, or solving problems or trying to help somebody who's you know having a, a significant difficulty with something. It's not fun. But if you have, well, getting back to the original point, you really need to have a passion for making this work and making it work on a global level. It's, it can't be about personality or personal um, object or subjectivity. It can't be about what you want. It has to be about what everybody needs. Um, and the, the chapter setup is kind of similar uh, to, to LTI in the sense that in LTI, the translators and the proofreaders and the transcribers don't work for the language coordinators. It's the opposite. The coordinators are there to do whatever those translators and proofreaders need so that they can do their thing. The, it's, it's the people who are doing the work that are the heroes, so to speak. And by extension, none of those coordinators work for me. I'm here to work for them, give them whatever they need so that they can do whatever they can do for the people who are actually you know, in need of their, their help. It's not pretty. This stuff is not fun most of the time. The overall effect. We have lost you, Ray. Ray. I think you might have dropped. Yeah. Could it be called the Global Administrations Team? I don't see why not. Can you repeat that? The Global. The Global Administrations Team. So the um, G A T GAT sounds catchy. <laughs> So, for example, this team might comprise of um, a, a representative from the GCA, a representative from the uh, lecture team, a representative from the translations team, um, a representative from the scientific literacy team, um, etc. Um, what teams we think are necessary. For instance, those ones I've just mentioned, some existing, um, seem to be quite important, and some not, seem to be quite important uh, to the functionality of a movement that advocates the scientific method for social concern. Um, maybe you could also add in a communications team. My big bugbear is that um, if you're not going to go about communicating this direction uh, in a way that people can hear it, then it really doesn't matter how valid the information is that you're presenting. Um, it needs to be, be heard by the other person on the other end in a way they can receive it. 
So, I mean, that's another topic. But, you know, if we were to, to list these teams and each representative, you know, can come and, and be a part of the, uh, the um, global administration team, for example, and um, discuss uh, any issues in any of these teams or the movement at any point, then it can be a fluctuating type of, type of thing. And, the, and basically that team um, or, or someone within it, um, I don't know, somehow is given these codes for the YouTube channel so that whenever someone um, wants to upload something from the lecture team, for example, they have another lecture team member to check over it, for example, or from you know the scientific literacy team. This is just some, throwing some ideas out there of how it might actually work on a functional basis. Yeah, I would, um, I would definitely go with a core group of people who their only responsibilities to be in the team, but I would heavily emphasize the fact that it isn't the core who does everything. The core will merely be responsible for recruiting representatives um, or any person of, a, of great value to the global organization. So the, the, pretty much outsourcing stuff all the time if needed. By outsourcing, I mean other areas or other people in the movement who are active in some place else. It, it really seems like it's, it's there to just make sure that the company that's being put out is good and that any um, egregious issues are being are being addressed and that this team has the power to and the means by which to address them so uh, it's difficult isn't it because for instance you can't just give everybody who ever walks into this team access to all of our global communicative communicative channels that's a, you know very sensitive information so yeah, that that's that the heart of this of what's difficult, you know. I suppose if many of the people in this room, um, you know, were of like mind, we'd probably put the video back up tonight. But we don't actually have the power to do that. So, I I don't think that would do any good at this point. I think it's better to establish a situation that would prevent situations to arise uh, in the first place. Yeah, no, good point, Gilbert. That that's uh, that I I definitely concur. I suppose I'm just saying, for for now, and to get some stability back in this thing, and um, and not make it look so so bad. The things in the letter still stand in terms of the video. You know, could go back up, and the and the letter could come down. And if those two things um, happen, as well as we start to actually enact this group that we're talking about, then at least we've made some some progress in the suggestions made in the letter, as well as um, uh, address these issues of. Uh, of the video being taken down by you know one person I suppose or whatever. Okay, so as I see it, really just two steps missing to make uh, how how was the name of GAT happen? Um, one of them is getting agreement with with the person who has power of all of those mediums, and the second one is um, actually let's say three. There's three things. Sorry. Second one is getting the volunteers, and the third one is also getting uh, and before starting more feedback from other chapters and other members um, of chapters who aren't here present today. So this will probably be probably mentioned in the, the next international meeting, I guess. But that's up for putting in the agenda. But yeah, these three things basically are the only technical issues with that stand between us right now and the creation of such team. Um, I would uh, suggest um, to, for the video, I'm um, sorry, more than the video, for the blog article, article that uh, included the video, because it was uh, personally, um, I mean, the video was made for the blog, wasn't it? <laughs> Uh, the blog was just the transcript and the sources for the video. Okay, well, anyway, um, I would suggest um, before it gets up again that it goes through the uh, blog team as it should have gone uh, before and uh, to have the approval from, from the blog team uh, and uh, so that, you know, we start from the beginning. Hmm? What do you think? Well, I think the action of putting up a simple transcript of his video on the blog was fine, but the action of putting it to promoted status himself should have gone with someone else. Sorry, I didn't understand, Andy. Would you please expand this? I mean, Matt was saying that the blog article was just a transcript of the text of a video that was being put up. That content was already being checked um, by whoever controlled the video team. It should be fine to put up a transcript of a video that's already going up, but um, because uh, Matt was acting 
as one of the publishers for articles on the blog at the time. He could uh, promote any articles on the banner, and I don't think it's right for him to uh, promote his own articles up there like that. That should go with someone else at the same time. So whenever a new article article gets published, it just automatically shows up uh, on the front there, right? Uh, whenever an article gets published, it shows up on the, well, listed on the front page of the blog, and you can put it promoted to the banner itself, which I think is what brings it through to the front page of the Zeitgeist movement at the same time. Okay, well, I just submitted it like any uh, other article, and uh, like you say, yeah, it was just a transcript and source guide, so the fact that it was approved to go on the official channel, um, I, I think, stands for itself. I recently um, put a whole sorry. I recently put a whole series on the on the blog, and it was looked over by Andres. Uh, he looked over it and 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 uh, put it up there basically after having a look and making a couple of suggestions to some changes. So the idea that it's not um, manned at all, I don't know whether that actually stands. It, it seems like someone would have looked over over Matt's um, article before he published it on the blog. Sorry, um, I, uh, could you repeat again? I didn't get the last part of it. Well, I can't speak for Matt's um, uh, video blog uh, with all the sources that he posted on the, the blog on the main site. But for myself, who's um, released eight blogs uh, in the last couple of months or so with my eight series presentation... Andres uh, had a look yes. over all of them and um, was helping make suggestions and things to, that, that needed changing. So there was definitely someone on the other end rather than it just um, going up. I'm not sure if that's the case for Matt, but it certainly was for me. Yes, recently Andre Delgado has been putting a lot of effort in there and uh, keeping things going on the blog. Although I'd like to ask James, is it just me or does it seem like we've been talking about recommendation points 2 and 3 at the same time? That is that on point 2 we're saying that we need some administrative team for accountability in solving people's concerns internally and on point 3 we need at least dual checking of things in curation you know, with a team controlling what goes up on YouTube. It, it just seems to me that those are separate uh, groups and we're mixing them up a bit earlier. Yes, I suppose they have an overlap perhaps. Well, um, we're already going almost an hour and a half. Um, just to point out, um, we've discussed the fact that we do need to create a, a central administrative body, body for now. Uh, named get we can always talk about what the eventual name will be but uh, like somebody said it's catchy <laughs> um, and aside from that uh, I don't think anybody disagreed that there should be a certain amount of quality control uh, on the materials that are being put up on official channels so um, and how how exactly it will happen I don't think we'll be able to determine today um, but those are the main points um, I would propose a continuation of, of the talk uh, in the next international meeting uh, so that other national coordinators that haven't been here today or haven't been informed uh, to, uh, to also join in on the discussion. Um, so yeah, uh, on the, just, just to make clear, because this was stated in, in, in the draw up uh, about the video being instated or reinstated. Uh, again, uh, I don't think this at this point will do any good or so, or will make any workable solution for everybody. And in chat, there are people talking about the person in with the with the power. I mean, we're all adults. We can all we're talking. We can all name everybody. I mean, uh, Peter, like I said, has responded to the situ situation uh, because of the fuss about it. Um, I'm sure that if we uh, organize things in a way that is acceptable to everybody that's currently working on a day-to-day -day basis, that that won't be a problem. So, uh, like I said, we need to create uh, what we've discussed first, and then we can talk about. Um, oh well, then we 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 won't run into these situations again. So it, it doesn't I, I make do a whole lot of sense to me. Go ahead. I, I do know what you mean, Gilbert, in terms of there needs to be a long plan, but there are definitely some immediate problems with this that were brought up in that document. Um, yes, we do need this structure, 
but for what little structure we do actually have at the moment, I think everybody on here is in agreement that that video was validated by the GCA and 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 it needs to be up as as well. I don't think anybody said that this this open letter has not caused um a lot of uh of internal conflicts and stress for many people in, in, involved, as well as a, um, uh, maybe a good deal of distraction for many people away from actually doing the work we should be doing. But So I, I think actually these two issues are issues. I think the video does need to go up because it was, it was validated. And um, I think the letter could, you know, should come down, um, especially seeing as now we're moving forward as goodwill gestures as we move into the, the future to build a stronger structure. But... It, it's it's like you can't really have peace when when you've still got these issues outstanding. I, I think um, you know we've got to put the uh, one one the both have to be enacted. Um, well, look, I, I think that all well, um, how to word this the right way. Um, look, the division about whether it should be up or down is just way too big to become any good. Um, aside from that, talking about GCA validation on the video video I don't think is fair in, in terms of what I've explained in the beginning. We weren't the body to decide about any content in the first place. Uh, we've talked about it uh, because we got a complaint from a chapter in which we advised to put a disclaimer on, on it, which we thought would be enough. But I mean, I, I feel I feel very wrong when 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 we're being seen as being having validated the video. We did no such thing. I don't um, see how you can say that, that, Gilbert. I haven't what? Sorry. Wait, wait, wait. I haven't watched the video. I don't know what the video is about. I can't validate anything that I haven't watched. So when was when this? Was this um, when when did this happen? Because I think this might have happened when I was absent. But March. regardless, if okay, but if this really happened, then as a team we have to stand by the word. That is the way I see it now. Because we're obviously in internal conflict in the team right now. We have to point out our protocol and follow the procedure. Which in my case already stated that I disagree with the decision of leaving the video down. But it's a disagreement that. You know, I disagree, but I will still continue committing my resources to the team and to to pursue solutions and continue working and building the movement. Um, yeah, that that is my input here so far. Well, a healthy basis for a healthy movement uh, is to uh, have trust right now in in the people that we've had a conversation with. It's been a great meeting so far. We've had uh, good points being discussed, uh, made a good agreement about the get and quality control in the future. I think that should be enough for the people right here, right now. That's my personal opinion, I'll say that. So, uh, I mean, if it's now only going to be about getting the video up, I feel very wrong about the nature of the meeting. Well, could I, could I just say, the, the meeting that was had with the GCA to say whether the video was, yeah, staying, was staying up, up. Did, anyone did anyone not bring up their concerns? Up their concerns? Uh, sorry, sorry, did, did anyone not bring up their concerns at the time? Giovanna remembers this situation. Perhaps that she you should speak because I didn't really discuss the content so much, only the concern. Um, Victor, Victor? Is, you, your microphone is open. I'm sorry, so, sorry. So what, uh, what did you want to know, Gilbert? I didn't get it. No, I was doing something here. I'm sorry, sorry. Go ahead, Giovanna. Oh, yeah. James, could you, could you ask that question again, but address it to Giovanna, who was there at the meeting as well? Yeah, I was just saying the point that the meeting was had, and at the time the discussion was regarding whether or not the video should stay up. Did no one actually say in the meeting, oh, hang on a second, guys, this isn't our jurisdiction, we can't even have this conversation? Because if you then had the conversation and said the video should stay up, that implies that you have some jurisdiction over the matter, doesn't it? does it not? <laughs> You're asking me a uh, question that I cannot uh, answer, or we've just talked about before, um, about the jurisdiction. Anyway, because of this video, a lot of people had a lot of problems, and, and um, uh, therefore, um, I was talking, um, I was asking to remove the video, not only for the Italian chapter, but also for some of the uh, Canadian chapter, or some French chapter. Ch uh, French chapter, um, Sri Lanka chapter at the time, um, and uh, and a few other people. Um, and by the way, uh, I don't think. 
this is uh, the case now to discuss whether we had or not the jurisdiction to uh, to do that or not. We did it. Um, Matt was there and a few other people were there. And uh, even though I didn't uh, like the final solution, uh, the uh, the we asked to uh, we finally asked to put some uh, disclaimer about uh, that. Uh, but of course, as this video has brought up a lot of uh, problems. In in the last few months, um, last of which your email, your open letter. Of course, we are now discussing how to face this. Um, I have proposed to uh, uh, to put it back in the uh, blog team to, to review the article. Um, someone else uh, proposed something else, um, and uh, you know um, that that's all about. We are going to discuss this the next meeting, as Gilbert said. Um, and um, of course, I agree with Gilbert that um, I feel that uh, this meeting has been um, a, a good um, a good meeting. But of course, I feel very, un yeah, very un uh, uncomfortable. Un uncomfortable. Victor? Oh, nothing, nothing. Uh, very uncomfortable if this meeting ends up, uh, ends just to having the decision to put it up or down video, I mean, uh, because I think the, um, at, the, at this at this point uh, we have all um, all us all of us to uh, uh, to see um, uh, a little bit bro uh, wider um, broader and uh, to uh, think about what's happened um, so that it won't happen again because uh, um, we are all here to uh, promote the zeitgeist and what and our train of thoughts so. Um, this kind of uh, division and uh, breaks uh, make a lot of people suffering and we are not doing a good thing for, uh, for the movement itself. So uh, uh, let's say that we are going to discuss this, um, find a solution. Uh, we can also um, ask to other people what they think and bring up a solution all together. And then finally, after the solution, we can decide about the video. This is my take personally. Uh, what the, the question? I, I've had some time to think while you were talking. Thank you, Giovanna. Um, so basically, the question was asked, uh, or, or well, the suggestion is being made that in the meeting we validated the video for some some sort of re reason or whatever. Um, what happened was that there was fuss about it. People raised concerns and I approached Matt to talk about it uh, because also within my own team, the GCA, there were people uh, becoming very uh, yeah, concerned uh, about the content of the video. Um, so we decided to have a talk about it to see if action should be taken at that point. Uh, and, uh, and also uh, on a matter of the concerns, not the video, not the content, just on the concerns of people addressing it to us since being chapter members, chapter coordinators, that at that point becomes our concern to at least address the concern to the lecture team, in this case, Matt. So and on that basis, that's why I invited Matt to that, to that meeting to discuss uh, at least uh, what the concerns were exactly about and the other members in my team were much more informed about the video as I already admitted. So at that point, we just did enough to blow the fire off, if you will. I, I don't feel it's the right way to state that we ever validated a video or whatever. I don't think that at this point, being that being the basis, everybody's, uh, uh, that, that wants the video up now says we have to uh, stand by a decision made earlier which I can I, I, I just don't find myself uh, agreeing with this statement because I don't feel I ever made the decision about a video. I just put out a fire between complaining chapter members and uh, a person involved in the lecture team. That's all. So may I, if I may chime in here, there was a meeting between, I believe eight people were present and all but uh, one um, came to a very clear decision, consensus to keep it up. And uh, like James has said, the GCA assumed jurisdiction for that 
for that uh, for that decision, uh, and to just now go back and say that no, we didn't have juris- you didn't have jurisdiction for it, or that because you you know some members of the GCA weren't there is essentially immaterial, and you're just ignoring the decision that was very clearly made. So that's why this is it, this is an issue, and it relates to the letter because um, it, it it very directly um, relates to the problem of of Peter having sole access to override a decision that the GCA team uh, made. No, yep. but but that, that that's that's not the case. I mean, uh, we never had the intention to discuss whether the video should be up or not. The only intention of that media me, uh, of that meeting was to. Uh, blow the fire off and make sure that it doesn't escalate. So that's my own. That has been my only intention of participating in that meeting, because I know uh, that your work in the lecture team was of great value uh, at that point uh, and still is. And in the past, uh, people have complained a lot, and uh, that has escalated as well. So our only intention there was to create a workable situation, not validate anything. I, I still don't understand that, Gilbert. I mean, like, when I was initially discussing this with Peter through emails, um, we were discussing whether it should remain up or not, and he said, let's have the GCA decide. So that's why we had that meeting. I, I just, I, it doesn't, it seems rather disingenuous to say that that wasn't the intention of the meeting when it was clearly stipulated that that's what it was. Well, Peter, Peter has never asked us to make a decision about it, so I, I don't know how you guys plan to give that a continuation, but we were never approached by Peter to talk about this issue at all. Uh, sorry, Gilbert. Can you hear me, guys? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, just my two cents here. Uh, Matt is right. Uh, we have an email from from Peter saying, let the GCA take a decision about this, but there's a poor communication with Peter, and that when when right the time to to that meeting, uh, Matt, I was there. Remember, uh, Gilbert. Now you're saying you're not you're not seeing the you have not seen the video. Well, that's creepy for me because uh, we take a decision. We we arrive at a consensus in that meeting, and I can't remember, Matt, <clears throat> when you asked me in the team, what What do you think about the video? I, I have seen the whole video and I, I don't have problem with that video, but I think there's a lot of members who can have problems. So I, I suggest in that time to put a disclaimer. And we arrived to that consensus. It's not a kind of validate the, the, <clears throat> the video, but it, but it was a suggestion. And the problems uh, after that come later between you, Matt, and, and Peter. But you're right, Matt. You're, you're right. We, we arrived at that decision in that meeting. So let me just recap this. So if the GCA made a decision, even though it was outside of their, of ours, speaking of their, but in fact, I'm technically part of the team, so I'm going to change to our decision, GCA. If the team has made a decision, then it must stick by it in principle. Um, that's the way I see it. Now, because it's outside of the jurisdiction, whether the video comes back up or not, well, we can't really guarantee anything, but we the only thing you can guarantee is basically saying to Peter, look, you asked us in the past, and you know we did agree in the meeting to keep the video up with a disclaimer, and just this removal is just... <laughs> I have no words for it. I, I, I prefer not to comment on it, but... Yeah, that's from that's my opinion. Well, Miguel, maybe maybe we can try something. I I think we cannot, but we are try we are trying to solve these issues uh, for the future. So, I I agree with the consensus to have a, a team specialized for that. So we can try anyway. Well, Gilbert, I think it's fair for you to say that you were just there to ease tensions, but then if you don't think you should have a say in whether that video stays up now, then what we need to ask is who should, because if we're asking for a team to be set up just for solving problems like that, then are you just saying that Matt should sit and wait for us to go to chapters and find volunteers for that? Um, I just didn't understand the last part. I agree with the first part that I was only there to extension, but what 
the what do you mean with the last part with Matt waiting? What what would he be waiting for? I mean, Matt is now complaining that uh, Peter has made a unilateral decision to take the video down based on complaints that were sent to him when we have been say, saying here that it shouldn't be made his responsibility. He shouldn't be put in that role of administratively taking down videos because of emails sent to him and that we want an, another team set up for that kind of accountability. And so if if you don't want that role and someone else is going to take that role, are you just saying that Matt needs to sit tight? Is that it? What I'm saying is that in order to... Uh, that's, this is to I'm looking for the way of the least conflict in moving forward. That's the only thing I'm looking for right now. I'm not very concerned um, with what happened before this in the in the sense that uh i it was just not ideal the things that happened the way it happened it, it it's 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 something that we should have probably organized in the past which we didn't and that's that's why it blew up i think that most of the meeting now we've been talking well the way it's going right now it might not even be most of the meeting anymore but most of the meeting prior to this discussion uh, was very good because we've talked about workable solutions, solutions that we will implement and that's where I would want to have left it uh, but since this has now become a pressure point uh, yeah I'm, I'm still only for uh, making the agreements here so that it will not happen again and not uh, harp over something that, ha that has happened uh, I don't think that will end in the best result for everybody um, if I can but this was brought up, up. Sorry. Up. Sorry, but this was brought up in the letter that I presented at the beginning. It was one of the points and we said we would go through these points. So it might be it might be lovely to agree all the time, but the fact is is that this is um an an, an actual issue um uh, that is outstanding. And the thing is if we are actually interested in solving this issue, then this is the actual issue on the table right now. And it's, it's a consequence of us not having structure in the past. And yes, it'll be useful to have it in the future, but it doesn't stop the fact of where we are now. If we all leave this meeting tonight and the video stays down and Matt's letter stays up online, then this is just going to go on and on and on. It's not going to get any better. Those two things need to happen quite frankly i mean i think that the video should probably go go um up first but if if matt i'm, I'm opening this up to the floor matt you've had this at least some structure delivered to um the the you, the recommendations made in your letter would you be willing to make the first step forward in in maybe taking the open letter down with the idea that it might provide some good faith for peter maybe to put the video up if it was going to be agreed on that uh, the video is going to be reinstated and that changes will be made. Um, look, look I, I'm, I'm absolutely, I will just go and make a firm statement here because I'm not happy the way that this that conversation is turning. Now it's turning into we will do this and you will do that. Uh, we were just here to talk about solutions. That's what I invited people for or what we invited people for. Um, at this po point, I'm losing in interest in discussing the video, I'm, but this meeting is not just about me, so other people from the GCA can speak up, but I, I'm getting, I mean, this is something uh, that not only happened in this situation, but uh, people have problems with letting go of the, the situations that just weren't covered in the past. We've talked about the solution, why is it not good enough to instate the protocol with coming videos um, and let go of this issue. Why is that difficult? Well, as devil advocate here, it's not a hard thing to do. And I'm in regards to this video issue, I'm as I said it before, I, I'm against it being down. Um, I mean, the way the video was brought down was too arbitrary, just plain and simple. And the fact that we have information on assessing the validity of scientific evidence taken down as a member, and I, I, I feel concerned about that. Now, I understand that the video might have mentioned some claims and pissed off some people off, but man pointed very very well during the video that he want he emphasized the, the train of thought 
And it, it was this, even a disclaimer put forward by the GCA uh, when the time I was absent, um, say, you know, basically underlying this fact that it does not represent his yen, like the specific claims map did. Now, for the video to stay down, that that sends a message saying that the, the core of the video was wrong, and the core of the video was teaching how to assess the validity of scientific evidence. I mean. <laughs> That's it. I mean, as I said before, I don't even know what to comment on this. Well, I would, I would like to say that um, um, all this um, ha that happened um, in this case with in this case with ma mass videos, but it could have been with uh, who, whatever article or you know whatever radio program and and so on. Um, it has brought up uh, a problem, and we are going to try to solve it the best we can. Um, so uh, I think the uh, putting up the video and taking down the letter uh, is part of that solution that we're going to go through. Um, so um, I don't think it's fair from you to uh, say no, you got to, you know, you got to put up the, the video, otherwise we don't discuss and we don't take the, the letter. And I mean, putting it that way is not really um, um, focusing on what we are doing tonight, which is trying to find a solution the best way we can. Um, having said that, I would like to um, underline that that video particularly, not because of maths, but that video um, has caused a, a lot of problems. So uh, shall we go on having, having people that complain about that, that, uh, it, that's, uh, um, that, uh, that video talks about? Uh, yes, so we have to face a lot of, uh, I don't know, answer to emails and, uh, and everything else will, that will come up or answering to other people, to other coordinators who don't agree. Uh, so there are a lot of uh, um, edges that we have to look for. We, we, we need to, uh, you know, to go through and find the best solution. So it's not really now that we have to decide if it goes up or not or, or if it goes uh, if it has to be reviewed or, or not, let's say that we have the point now tonight. Uh, you have uh, talked about what you would have liked, and you have brought up a lot of points we need to think about, to, to go through, to learn, and, and find the solution. If I can just add some... Uh... Some possible closure to this, uh, perhaps we can summarize the following possibilities that the GCA could take possible actions in the following way in the sense that they could propose as, G as a GCA because the decision was made in the past to the uh, the one who owns the channel, the video channel, to reinstate. Or we could also think about, uh, there could be also the GCA uh, that uh, takes the action to just talk about it. There's uh, a difference in action, but there, perhaps for us, there has to be some uh, pointer to what the GCA will do, if I make myself clear. Well, I just want to um, give you my feedback on this. Um, uh, yeah, okay. Um, well, um, I think uh, we heard a concern about the video, and uh, right now we cannot make that decision. I mean, we cannot put that video back again. So, but we can take that and just uh, communicate it to Peter, as a simple as it is, because we don't have access to that. But we shouldn't keep in focus in the video as uh, the only thing in this meeting. Because uh, I do understand the video is a consequence of the lack of the organization that we have. So we understood that and that we have to move forward. So I think we need to credit that team, whatever you want to call it, and for now on, so that issue won't happen again. But the issue of the video, which is from the past, is because of the lack of the structure that we have from the past. 
So let's put it this way. So the only way we, we can supposedly between quotes, if you want to <laughs> fix this problem is to get back to Peter and to say, you know what, and the meeting, this issue grow up and whatever it was. So, and move on and move on because uh, I mean, we, we are not going anywhere here. If we keep the conversation and, and uh, just in a bid and a bid and a bid all the time. And so I think there are another uh, point in the agenda but you go through or at least summarize whatever we have and then next uh, international meeting so we can keep talking about this stuff. I agree with you, Victor. Actually, I don't have more time. <laughs> um, I, I agree with you too, Victor. Oh, is there a meeting uh, to set to, to discuss the, the issue of structure moving forward? Could, could someone propose that on, and schedule it perhaps? I mean, back to you, Gilbert. I just arrived. I, w I had to go away from the keyboard for two minutes or something, um, so I, I missed the part of what Victor said. Um, so, he, if anybody, he, uh, he was just saying that ultimately, and and this is true, uh, whatever happens with the video from now, it is a product of of um, the the structural problems that we've all agreed exist, and there needs to be a meeting um, uh, to, about how to go address to address those issues. Um, in the future, I was just trying to get to the stage where we can actually book a meeting to dis discuss that. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, again, with with the, cr the creation of, of this GAT or, or whatever the temporary name or permanent name will be, I already said and proposed that that would be done in the next international meeting, but under the condition that it will be about that and not about the problems in the past, for example, this video. So you just are proposing to forget about it and not correct that problem? No, well, nobody will forget it because obviously uh, we acknowledged that, that there was a problem in, or there is a problem in, in uh, validating data information, quality control, etc. So, and again, like on a personal note, I believe the information that I do have seen uh, from you, for example, Matt, was great. So. Um, this is nothing against the video from my point of view uh, as well. It's it's just about the structure for me and I want to move on with that point. So that's why I'm saying on the condition that this doesn't do, turn into a two hour meeting about that single video but only about the things that we need in place in order to ensure it doesn't happen again. So there's... Okay. No, I said ultimately the people that want to make the movement progress, I can't see why they wouldn't agree with that point of view that we have to eliminate those problems that we've had by putting the right structure in place and just move on from there. That's, that's what we're here for, right? So there's one action point and that's the talking about the new body, if I'm understanding correctly. Yeah, which was intertwined with the other subject of of, of, of quality control in the sense that the for example it would also be discussed how we go about uh, controlling the inf or well quality controlling the information that goes online for example a video a lecture etc etc written material in my view we're not actually serious about solving this this issue if we don't correct the problem of this video it's as simple as that for me. I, it's part of the letter. It was part of my expression of concern, uh, part of the the recommendation, sorry, that uh, that James drafted up. And I don't see how you could actually be honest and serious about solving an issue if you're forgetting about the one event that sparked uh, these issues needing to be solved. Matt, we cannot solve that problem of video because we have no access to that. Okay, so uh, uh, but we can, but we can't. Um, communicated to Peter what we just talked tonight. That's the far we can go. So we really have to move on because this meeting is not about your videos only. The video, the issue with the video is because the lack of organization of the team to take care of that. That's why we're having this. So the idea is for the, for the near future, have that team so this thing doesn't happen again. But if the video is sold or not sold, doesn't mean we get stuck there and then we cannot move forward. So that I, I didn't get in that feeling, which is not that good, because this is not about Matt and the video. This is a consequence of the lack of, of the, the team that we have in the past. 
So that's the point I want people to, to look. That's the issue here. We need that team so to stop this kind of stuff to happen again. Yep, I agree. And obviously, if you don't have access to the channel, then you can't really do anything about that. Well, uh, we have access. That's not a problem. I, I think that's a misunderstanding then in uh, in my team that we don't have access there, but we do. If if we don't have the password right here, it will be a simple email to get the password. That's not a problem. But I, I, I think Victor in the last point stated exactly how I feel about the issue if, if we if we're stuck if we're getting stuck here with without looking at the solution that we've talked about then then I don't yeah that's the only thing that really matters now I guess from at least from my point of view I, I don't disagree but then you can imagine the amount of time that Matt put into that uh, that video uh, certainly does does play. I mean, if if I had um, something that I put that much work and effort into to be take, you know, taken down, I'd be upset. I certainly, but I, I think there's another side to this equation that does need to be said as well. In in the on both in from my limited perspective and both sides of the equation since then, there's also another important point in this document that needs to be raised. And that is that we, guys, you know, we, we need to remember that we're on the same team and we should try to communicate in way in a peaceful as way as possible and not do so in public. That did, that did drive this, this thing forward as well. And perhaps no amount of structure can ever really get behind that. If we're going to, you know, go about this sort of line of angle of doing things together, then we're not going to change the world. We can forget that for a start. Well, exactly. And I mean, of course, the letter has been written up. And I mean, uh, we've tried to treat it with the most respect as possible by reviewing it point by point. But there was never a statement that every point in the letter that was uh, that was raised uh, would be agreed on by everybody. I mean, that's imp that's not... That's not very likely to happen. Let's let's just say, and uh, that's the, the video is the point that people fall over, and and I can tell you right now that if uh, if my experience had been that the meeting that the GCA had with you, Matt, was for the validation of the meeting, and we did validate it, and and then we will put it back online. Uh, there's going to be disagreement still. It's not going to solve. A problem there's a group of interested people in here right now uh, who hopefully came with the main intent uh, of, of furthering the movement by discussing what caused the problem and how to solve the problem but I can tell you uh, as well that there is an equal uh, maybe larger group I don't know if it's larger or, or, or not but there is a substantial group that do don't want to see a video like that reinstated which in, in the end, it will. The only thing that will happen from it uh, is create conflict to put it back up. If you, if the people that came here today, signatories to the letter, have the intention just to to solve the problems that caused it and want to further the movement, that's why I said I can't. I can't see why anybody in that position, with that true intent, will just will, won't let it go and uh, adhere. Oh, sorry to and ah, fuck my English <laughs> and um, work towards a situation that it will not get happen again. Sure, Miguel, it creates conflict by being down. It creates conflict by being up. So uh, in in this position, uh, there's no real good solution. So we move, we should move forward and create a situation that will not create it again. Yeah, uh, we shouldn't think the a video or activist of the movement is more important than the movement. Okay, that's wrong. That's following people. It's not following the movement. We all made mistake. And uh, like I said before, what happened with the video is a consequence of the lack of the team that we have. They can they can uh, can take care of that. So, but to center the whole thing in the video as a condition to move forward, that's wrong. That's wrong. And uh, James, uh, you, you say that Matt put a lot of time with that. Well, yeah, uh, me too. And you too. And Peter too. So a lot of people. So what Matt did is no more important than what you did and what I did or what Peter did. 
So let's make uh, that clear, okay? I, I suppose all I'm all I was really trying to reiterate is that were it to happen, I don't think anybody could deny that. Then the things that would follow from that, the letter comes down. Um, that's why I asked Matt a few minutes ago whether he'd consider taking the letter down as a goodwill gesture first off. Because anything that gets that video up and that letter down is only going to help our, mo our move forward to get the best structure. It, it, it seems that they're just goodwill gestures. That's really all, all I'm saying. Um, and they're, they're going to stand as points of contention even when we do have the structure in the future. I'm not, I'm not belittling the idea that we need a structure. Obviously, I, I wrote it at, at great lengths into this document that we've prepared. So I, I very much agree. All I'm saying is the common sense idea that if the video went back up and the letter came down, obviously that's going to make things better. I don't know, unless I'm missing something. Well, I think Gilbert uh, and uh, Victor already told you that a lot of people didn't didn't like wouldn't like to see the video again, um, and the problem will go on and on. Uh, so maybe we should just have that one minute. We reorganize ourselves, and then we find the solution also for that video. I, I think it's it's fair for uh, for everyone, for you, for uh, the GCA that has to be uh, reorganized, um, or it needs uh, you know more the the other teams and controls and, and all what we've come to. Well, to take a, a, an example, um, I mean Zeitgeist one isn't exactly material that that we wanted to be associated with a movement now i'm not comparing your video matt to zeitgeist one i haven't i haven't watched your video so i couldn't but it was something of controversy as well it created discussions uh peter chose to move away from it uh, as much as he could because obviously he made it so he can't uh, I mean, um, that's one video. I mean, this is a video, regardless of the content that's in it, it's created uh, a discussion, and, and the actions around it created the discussion as well, obviously. Um, so that's, again, why I'm saying we have a workable solution to continue uh, gathering the information necessary to install something like a GAT for the movement, and I guess that, that's the only thing that, that makes sense to me to, to work towards right now. And and I, I mean, of course, you, you're talking about the letter, but the letter is out there. I mean, it's it's not going to be forgotten, just like Zeitgeist One is not going to be forgotten, or other other events that that happen. So, I I don't I don't see why any putting up or taking down would do any good. They the actions are already there. The only way it's going to escalate further is if it continues to be escalated by uh, uh, people participating in that conversation about it. So. That's really the, the question here. Is is that the intention that if we don't adhere to uh, to the request to put it back up, that's what's going to happen? Is, uh, is is just going to be escalated? While while we did uh, make a lot of sense in the first part of the meeting and came to a workable solution for the future, is that where we stand? I mean, in my point of view, if Peter could walk away from Zeitgeist One, uh, you already have the video, I think, up on Facebook or something like that. You have a copy of it. I'm sure a lot of people have copies of it. So it's out there and the letter is out there. So just let it be and let everything simmer down and let's work towards, you know, uh, solving this issue the next time around. That's what is needed now. Not if the video is up or down or, I mean, that kind of distracts us from this meeting, which I was thinking maybe we're gonna get some, you know, useful solutions to this kind of problem. Uh, I I agree. I'm, I wasn't attempting to distract. I was just saying that, as my question was stated, that I just figured that if that were to happen, it would help us put our best foot forward in terms of communication. It would smooth the ground over. It would be the most ideal situation. However, we don't live in an ideal world. And I, I totally, totally appreciate what everyone is saying on this call. Completely understand and agree 100%. The most important thing is putting in a structure that makes sure that this doesn't happen again. So I don't think we need to go over that point. I think everybody knows that we need to do the structure thing. I didn't mean to ruffle anyone's feathers by it. I'm just saying that it would have been optimal in my view. But anyway, it doesn't really matter. I've sent Peter an email myself about that. I've been very clear with Matt that, you know, anything to get the letter down is good. So, And I've spoken to Matt at great lengths about 
um, the other issues entailed. So as far as I'm concerned, the structure moving forward is a really positive thing, and I'm really pleased that that's going to be brought up at the next international meeting.